Amen. Okay. All those things are good. It's all good things. So, so I want to start off with a question, and I didn't really prepare this question into my message, but it's kind of um, come into my, my spirit a bit this morning while I was praying and, and kind of walking around the school and um, asking God what's going on. And, um, and I said this morning to the prayer team, you know, it's like I'm, like I'm walking around and I'm seeing people drive by on Sunday mornings. Some of them speed on their way to gym and some of them on their way somewhere else. And, you know, you see people with their, their slow pitch gear, um, getting out of the cars at different fields. Um, you know, and you see people are, stuff's happening. It's not that they're not getting up, right? It's not like nobody leaves their homes on Sunday mornings. They actually do go out. And, uh, and this is what's going through my mind and in my spirit. And in my spirit, I'm going, God, but, but why do they not choose you? Like, why aren't you doing something? Like, I mean, come on, and, and this is now, and I know what a privilege we have. This is in respect, speaking to my father, saying, Dad, I know you can do something, right? Why, aren't you, why, why isn't there, like, something happening? Like, it's like, can you just, something, I don't know what something look, looks like, right? But it's almost like I want to close my eyes and just see stuff, right? And suddenly people get up on a Sunday morning or every day and they go, yeah, I'm going to live for God, right? It's like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Like, God, do something. Let people have that, right? I want, I, why doesn't God do that? Right? Why, why? And it's, it's a question which, which is almost for me one of those questions which is um, um, theologically, this question should, should almost stop any argument that people might have regarding God's sovereignty, right? Because people say God is sovereign. Yes, He is. I believe that 100%. I believe God's sovereign. But, but God says in His word that I will not violate, I will not break, I will not detour I will not sway to the left or to the right. Um, I will not add, there's no addendums. There, there's no adjustments. There, there's no oops, corrections, reprint. I will not do any of those things to my word. Now, can I accomplish more than what I've put in my word? Yes, I can. Does he have the ability to do anything, yes. Does he have the power and the strength and the might to do anything that we can imagine? Can God do it? Yes, he can. Amen. Do you believe he can? Amen. Good. Whew. Otherwise, we've got a long way to go. <laughs> right? We believe God can. Like, I believe God can do anything. But why doesn't he? Like, why, why doesn't he just come in with a cloud from the east, let's say, or from the above, and just come in with a cloud, and, and by his might, people just accept him. Right? People just go, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, they don't even have a choice in this because he's decided it, right? He's sovereign. So he's decided that everybody that's going to be in this cloud, is, that's going to be at this place where His presence is, every single one of them are going to say yes to Jesus and they have no choice in it. And we are all going to be Christians because God decided it. Right? Why, like, He's sovereign, right? He could do it. He has the power to do it. But why doesn't He do it? Why, why isn't it happening? Because... What he said in his word. Now, I asked this question this morning, and, and then Jarlin said to me, you should listen to your message that you preached two weeks ago. <laughs> and I said, I said, well, <laughs> thank you. No. <laughs> I didn't do that, but I was thinking that. No, I wasn't. No. So, and I know two weeks ago, I said, the, the reason it's not happening is, and this is what we have to get, is the way God set it up on earth is he said, I'm creating People, humans, you must, right? You must. <laughs> you must do it. That's, 
humans and I'm giving them the authority over earth. Not in heaven. You do not have authority in heaven. God has all the authority in heaven. All the power. We have been given authority over earth. So authority that was given to us was given to us with the purpose to have heaven interfere with earth. So if I want to see heaven come into Ladner, it means that I have to release the power of God that is all sufficient, all powerful, almighty to interfere with earth. But in me releasing it, is he going to break his word again? And the way the power is going to be released? No. It's not because I say, God, come and infiltrate Ladner. I've given him the right to come in with a cloud. It's not how it works. It's still through us. It's still through you and me that we have to get to these homes, to these people, and say to them, listen, I've got good news for you. God loves you. Now, that brought me to my next question. And I had a few questions this morning, and they were all kind of challenging in my thought. What on earth would convince people to want what we have? Like, why, like I'm, like I'm walking up and down the street at the front here, and I'm thinking, what, what would make anybody drive by this street and go, well, I want to go there? What would be the reason for people to say to you in your life, I want what you've got? Man, I, I want what's in your life. That's what I want. I want, uh, that, man, that is so attractive. That is, that is so appealing. That is so, so, um, I want that. Right, so now I'm walking up and I say, okay, so currently it's not working. I mean, there's some areas where people come to us and they say, and you hear people say, you know, your life, it's, it's great. We look at your family, we look at your children, we look at your home, we look at finances, we look at this and that and that, and man, um, teach us, show us, you know, what is different in your life, what's going on. But I don't know how many of you get questions every single day of your life of people asking you, man, I want what's in your life. Or, uh, uh, you know, there's something in your life that, is, that seems to me, because the word says by the fruit that we bear, people would say, wow, they've got a good father. That's what the word says. So by the fruit that we are having in our lives, people are supposed to look at this fruit and they're supposed to go, wow, they've got a good dad. So, so now I'm going in my mind, okay, God, so if it's about fruit, so the fruit is, is in heaven, let, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So obviously, what we have to get into our lives, um, which I think should be desirable for people, should be heaven, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So my fruit needs to reflect what it would be like to be a child of yours, and the, and the best place, the best example that we can find of what it means to be like a child of yours means that we have to have lives that reflect heaven. Right? Lives that reflect heaven. Now, thought process again. Okay, so what does that look like? How does my life reflect heaven? What areas of my life currently, if you have to evaluate your, yourself, what areas of my life is reflecting heaven? Like what areas are there that people would go at my life and say, man, yeah, that's, that's a track. So, now, so that's, that brought me to this point. Um, and this is the question that I have for you. And, and, and this is a tough question. And, and I want you to think about this. Um, on your, just think about this. Um, it says, your will be done on earth. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the key to heaven in my life is your will. Okay? His will. So His will in my life on earth as it is in heaven. That's, that's what I desire. So the question to you in your life right now is, how much of His will is in your life? So how, how open is the door for His will, 
right? How open is your life to say, I've gone in a direction which has been my direction, and currently, if I have to be honest about the direction that I've gone into, this is not a reflection of heaven's fruit. So I have to be open to say, God, whatever there is in my life, whatever it might be, that's in front of me right now, I, I'm willing to lay it down to have your will in my life. And that even means for me standing outside, going through saying, God, is it your will even to have the church? Right? Is Numa your will? Is this body how you want to do things or not? Because, you know, we have many good will ideas, and that's many times all they are. It's good intentions, good ideas. But if it's not God's will, it's not going to reflect heaven's fruit. Right? Good things. There are many good things. You know how many good organizations there are in the world that feed the hungry, that look after the poor, that, that do all these great things that, that's currently in Fort um, um, McMurray where they're helping the people and the victims of, of the fire and, and they are there with, with supplies and needs, meeting needs, and it's good world people. Their worlds are Good. But the challenge for us as a church and for me personally in my prayer life, because this all reflects to this tool that I've been given to allow heaven's power to infiltrate my world. All these things has to do and it ties together with will. With the will. Because that's how God set it up. God said, I'm creating man in my image and in my likeness I'm creating him. And that means that we have a will. And that means if we create it in His image and in His likeness, that means God has a will. So one or two wills is going to reign in your life. And good will is not necessarily God's will. You get that? Okay, so we're at the place in the Lord's Prayer, um, the place of asking and the place of petition. So we're going to read the Lord's Prayer together. Um, if all of you can, can read it with me once it's there. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, the glory forever. Amen. Okay, so, so that's the Lord's Prayer. So last week we looked at the first two lines. The first two lines were, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And from that message, what we gather together is the first thing is that we have a good Father. And what is our theology built upon? God? Good. Good. For those of you that weren't here, let's try that again. God? Good. So that's our theology. Uh, that's, and that's as simple as you can get it, and that should be able for all of us to understand. If something's good in our lives, it's God. If something's bad in our lives, it comes from the one that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Now, is he responsible for all your decisions? No, he's not, because you are making decisions yourself. But you need to know that there is an enemy that's after you. When you make bad decisions, he's going to be right there to jump upon them. But we also have a God that says that I'm not the one that tempts you. And remember what we said, hallowed mean, means sanctified. What does the word sanctified mean? It means removed from evil, cannot be in close proximity to evil, cannot be in touch with it. And God says in his word, as a good father, I will not use evil devices, evil vices to lure or to tempt you. Why? Because I cannot be close to it. It's not how I work. So if something comes into your life, what we do is we run it through our filters. The first filter we looked at last week, filter number one, is God, good. 
Devil, bad. So when something bad comes into my life, what, what should my response be? My response should be, I'm going to use the tools that God has given me, right? The tools that He's given me, um, complaining, moaning, begging, pleading, um, um, gossiping, um, all good tools, right? Of our bad father. Those are the tools of the bad father. Devil bad, that's his tools. God's tools are what? Pray heaven's will on earth. Start speaking about how powerful and how mighty your father is into your situation. And that is the tools that we as believers are supposed to use. Because we've got a new father. Don't use the old father's methods anymore. So hallowed means he's separated. Um, he's good. Um, he's got good plans for us. He loves us. We have a good father. Now we're at the place where it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now I want you to, to know that the Lord's prayer is called a petition prayer, uh, a request prayer. There are many requests and many petitions within this prayer. You will notice that this prayer starts off, um, in the beginning it starts off with God, it's got petitions in the middle, and then at the end it ends with praising God again. So this model, this is a model prayer given to us. Why? Because the disciples asked and said, Jesus, how do we pray? So this is not just somebody randomly thinking of, this is a good way to pray. No, this is Jesus saying to us, this is how I want you to pray. You're going to start off by glorifying your God, saying that you are big, strong, mighty, and powerful. You are removed from all evil. So what I'm saying by that statement is, whatever is coming across my path that is not good, I know it's not from you. You are removed from all evil, and I will glorify your name for your goodness. Okay? Starts off with that. Then Jesus gives us instructions because the center part of this prayer is asking. Now, a lot of people feel guilty thinking they're not allowed to ask. You are allowed to ask. It's not a bad thing to ask. We can ask God. So number one, God wants us to ask Him. He wants us to ask Him. God wants us to come to our good Father and ask. Um, and we are submitting our will to God's dominion. So, so, so here's the trick. A lot of people think that I'm allowed to ask for anything that's building my kingdom. Or what, like, which parts am I allowed to ask for? Um, you've got different theologies and different kinds of churches across the world and different kinds of people that's trying to, for, to convince people that they can, can ask for anything to build their own kingdom. And, and I hope that by the end of the morning, you will have more clarity about how do I ask for my needs. Okay, so the first thing that I want us to notice is there's a, a great scripture, and between John uh, 13 and John 17, John 14, 15, and 16, this is a, a discussion, a conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples during the Last Supper. So three chapters, 14, 15, 16, Jesus is sitting down with his disciples, and they are having a discussion. They're talking about things. Jesus is giving them information. John 13 is where, where um, they eat. John 17 is where he washed the feet. So in between, Jesus is having his, his last meal with his disciples, giving them insight. And I want you to notice everything that he says in these chapters. So John 14, 13, it says, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So what did Jesus say? Ask, ask. John 15, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. I love this scripture. And read it again. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father will be glorified that you bear much fruit. How's our Father glorified? By you bearing much fruit. How did you bear much fruit? You asked. How did you ask? By His words that's abiding in you. Okay? John 16. And in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, He will give you. 
Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. So God wants us to ask. Matthew 6, therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. A lot of people get stuck on that one. It doesn't say the Father knows your needs or the things that you have need of, so don't ask Him. Right? It says, before you ask Him. This is Jesus saying, we should ask. We should ask our Father. So if you want to know, notice that in Matthew 7, and this scripture is me, one of the scriptures which I always try to figure out, even as a dad, um, trying to figure out how my father, how much he loves me, because I know how much I love my children, right? So, so when we read the scripture, it says the following, ask and it will, be, it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who every son asks for a bread will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father who is, will who? The Father who is in heaven. Give good gifts to those who ask Him. So for me, when I read those scriptures, what I find that is clear to me is that God says, I want you to ask. I want you to ask. Feel, don't feel guilty. Don't feel condemned. Don't feel like, you know, you're a bad person because you're only thinking of yourself. No, our Father wants us to ask. But, but if you notice... Um, there is a, a, another filter. And this filter for me is key in our asking. This is me, the key filter. Um, last week, the, the filter was God good, devil bad. This week's filter for our lives, we find this filter in Matthew 6.10. And the filter, he says, it is, it is the one where it goes, thy kingdom come. Your will be done. So in my asking, I should have a filter before my asking. So before my requests are made, I must have the mindset and the heart of your will be done. Your kingdom come. John 5, 1 John 5 says, And if we know that he hears us, Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked Him for. So, so whatever petitions we've asked for, have you ever read that scripture and go, uh-uh, that has not happened to me. Whatever petition I've asked for. So, so what is our filter? Thy kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. So whatever we ask for, we must have the filter of God before us. It is first thy, then us. Now, for a lot of people, that's tough, even in our own lives, right? Because you have to evaluate everything that's in your life based on the thy and us. Like, you have to evaluate, and, and it's decisions that we have to make. If, if we want God's kingdom to come, it means that we have to make decisions regarding opportunities that come across our path. Doors that open up, right? Incredible doors. And, and, and then when you're in that situation, all you see is, man, this is God's blessing, God's favor. It's such a good door. But even in those moments, we have to ask, God, big door, is this yours? Is this yours? Because if, it, if it's mine, I'm skipping through it. Right? I'm not just going to walk through this opportunity. I'm going to run to it. Why? Because it's such a good thing for me. 
You know, I've asked God that, that, that you will advance me in my workplace. I've asked that, that, that you will help me to, to become financially in such a place where I can bless the body and bless the church. And obviously, this door is opened up, so um, I'm just going to go through it. And I'll see if I meet you on the other side. But it should be the opposite. For every situation in our lives where we, it should be God, your kingdom first, our second. In the Old Testament, there's a scripture, and this is called the, it's also called the petition prayer, and it starts with, may the Lord, 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 and it's in Psalm 20. It says, we will rejoice in your salvation, and in the name of God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions again. Man, all my requests, Everything I ask for. Now, how in the world can God fulfill all my petitions? How, in, how is that even possible? How is it possible for every single one of my petitions to become? Because this, do we believe the word? Yes. So this word is saying that our petitions should be fulfilled. Your petitions should be fulfilled. Does it mean, it's, it's almost like it feels like for many of us, it feels like, well, that's not even a battle I'm going to engage in. Right? I mean, that's not even something I'm going to worry about trying to fulfill all my petitions. No, ah, it's too busy. That's going to be too tough. Why on earth do I want to do it? No, I'm just going to do life the way it is right now. It's all good. I'm retired. My wife is working and running the business. She's looking after all my needs. I'm on a big picture in the newspaper, <laughs> looking skinny and tan, sitting on a go-kart. <laughs> right, everything is perfect. What else could there be? Right, what other petitions could there be? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, there's like, what else could there be for my life? The, the, and for many of us, and David, it's not saying you, this is you, but I'm just saying for many of us, it is about us. I've got everything I need. I've got everything I want. And this is one of those things which is so important for me as a body is, is our focus should be to, to advance God's kingdom in people's lives. So, so the filter for us is, is um, thy comes before us. So what I have to have in my heart is I have to have God, your will, because if I have your will in my life, my desires and my petitions will change. Biggest problem for most of us is we have God on our Sundays and we, um, we have God on, in the mornings when we wake up or maybe when we do quiet time. God's in those spots, right? He's right there. But, but we don't have him consistently throughout the day. The key is, if we focus on God, our desires will, becomes, will become God's desires. Some of us are going, how is that even possible? I don't know if I want to go that deep. Uh, again, we've, you know, I've been having conversations with people, and, and some people are saying, you know, they don't understand why, why the church isn't full. You know, why aren't there people banging out the doors? Because the word is so good, and I completely agree with them. Um, <laughs> And the worship is fantastic, and I agree with them on that. And we have great people, and people are loved when they come in, and they are being served, and, and there's hospitality, and there's great community forming, and all those things. It's all of them are there, you know. And, and the consistent answer that I get from people why there aren't more people engaging is because they are challenged to change. We are challenged in this body, which I believe is God's will for us as His body not just this body, but as His body, the challenge for us as His body is change. Is to acknowledge, God, we need you. And not just we need you because there's an economic crisis or there's a health crisis or there's a fire and we need rain. God, we need you because I want my desires to be your desires. I want all my petitions to be fulfilled. How's that for a goal? Write that on your wall. Right? That's a popular one. How's that going? Ah. Right? All 
your petitions. Now, this is not, oh, one day in heaven. Now, all your petitions to be fulfilled. The only way that is possible is when your petitions comes from the source. When your desires is actually his desires. That means my prayer life is going to change. That means my asking is going to be steered in a little bit of a different direction. Number two, but God wants you to ask. Okay, God wants you to ask. I'm, I'm gonna finish before 11.30. Number two, his kingdom is here. The phrase, thy kingdom come, has confused a lot of people. Some people are thinking that we're still praying that one day, God, um, you know, one day your kingdom's gonna come. Other people are like, God, let your kingdom come now. Those people just said that to me, let your kingdom come with a sword now. Let it come. Cut them, kill them, right? Some people, God, we need your kingdom. Do something. Um, and both those are wrong. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not right. So your kingdom come. It's not something that we are hoping for somewhere in the future. We read in Matthew, Matthew 4, um, it says, Jesus is speaking, it says, uh, from the time Jesus began to speak, uh, he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What is at hand? In your hand. It's, at, it's reachable. Where's your hand? How far your hand can go? That's where the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said it's there. Um, in Mark 1, it says, uh, the, the, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Saying it again. Matthew 12, he says, but if I cast out demons... By the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Jesus is saying, if I cast out demons, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Matthew 10, Jesus speaking to his disciples. As you go and preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So he's telling his disciples to go out and tell people the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely receive, freely give. Okay, so kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now for me, that answers a little bit of my questions this morning. But some of the questions, okay, God, so if I'm outside and I'm busy living, I want people to see you in my life. I want stuff, to, you know, I want, I want to change this community. And I know you have the ability to come in like a cloud and just change everybody. I know you said that you've given us a free will and you will not force your will upon any person. Um, and you've set up a system where the heaven's power is released by us being authorized to pray heaven into this place. Now, if I want people to look at my life and go, wow, I want your father, your daddy, there needs to be fruit in my life because you say people will know by your fruit that your father is good. So if I want them to have all of that, I need to have heaven on earth. So what does heaven on earth look like? Because if your kingdoms come, that's what he's saying, your kingdoms come. He said to the disciples, this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna heal the sick. You're gonna cleanse the lepers. You're going to raise the dead. You're going to cast out demons freely to receive, freely given. Here are some clues for us what it would look like if we were to bear the fruit of heaven on earth. Here's some suggestions. Now, how can Jesus tell the disciples to go and preach that the kingdom is here if the kingdom wasn't there? The kingdom was there. The reason Jesus could say to them, the kingdom of God has come, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's within your reach. It's right here. The reason Jesus could say that is because the king has come. Because the king was there, the kingdom was there. Now, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is alive and working in every single one of us. So some people might say, well, Jesus left. He's sitting with the Father right now, so the kingdom left. No, the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead is alive and working inside of every single one of us. So is the king here? The king is here. What's that song? The, 
The king is here. The king is here. I'm alive. Huh? Yeah, that song. Great song. <laughs> the king is here. That's my, it's in my head. I can hear it. It's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good song. So the king is here, right? He's, in, he's alive in us. Right? So, so the king is here. So how can he tell the disciples to go out and do all these? How can Jesus tell you to go and do all these things? Because the king is here. Right? So the reason the kingdom has already come is because the king has already come. Now the word kingdom, your kingdom come, comes from two words. Number one, king. We've just established who's the king? Christ. Dominion. What is dominion? When, when, when God said, let us create, create man in, in our image and in, in our likeness and let them have dominion. Dominion is the same word as authority. They are authorized to release heaven's power. So kingdom is king, Jesus, authority. Jesus, authority. So let your kingdom come. Let Jesus authority. Jesus' authority take hold of my life now. Not one day when I die. Now. Let your kingdom come. So when your kingdom comes in my life, we saw what he said to the disciples, what's the fruit going to be? You're going to heal the sick. You're going to cast out demons. You're going to raise the dead. Freely you've given it. Freely you're going to give it away. We're not going to ask people money, charge them for, for bottles of water that I've prayed over. That's just a side point. Um, Um, because what is he saying? He's saying, okay, so we have, I want you to get this in your thinking. We, first thing is we have to get, what's our filter? I must have God's desires as my desires, which means I have to lay my desires aside. I have to die to my desires and I have to trust, and this is the tough one for us, that my father actually has a good plan. We have to trust that. I have to say, God, I hope you've got a good plan for my life. Because we're nervous. Can I trust him? Can I trust him and go, yes, God, I don't know. I've got a pretty good one. But it's good. I've got a great plan. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to study this amount of years. Then I'm going to go into that. Then I'm going to get married. I'm going to have two kids, a boy and a girl. Um, right? I'm going to, um, we're going to live happily. We're going to have a home. I've got a great plan. Or, or, you know, you've got your plans for your life. But now we start saying, God, I want your will to be done in my life. That was my plan. Right? Good plan. We're going to live in South Africa. I'm going to start directing TV, and, and I want to start directing movies. I want to go into further into entertainment industry and become the most recognized person in the country with entertainment in the country. My wife's going to be an actress, and she's going to be hot. And, um, you know, we're going to have a great life. And it's, some of them came true. Um, <laughs> Right, so, so some of the, our dreams and our passions, but, but then somewhere along the line in our lives, we get to a place where we are confronted with God's plans, and that's where we have to d- decide, okay, okay, I've got my plans, and God, you've got yours. Okay, which one of the two am I gonna trust? Because if I trust you, I know whatever plan I could have come up with cannot measure up to what you have planned. So you have to trust God. You, every single, I don't care how old you are. Every young, small, Dylan, Amber, you guys are the youngest in here. Every single one of you, David, oldest. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not talking other David. This <laughs> Bill, Margaret, right? You guys are in, in your late 60s now. You have to say, God, I know what my plan is right now. I know how, how I feel. But listen, God's got a plan for your life now. Amen. Don't care how old you are. It doesn't matter. You have to say, God, I trust you. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my passions and with my desires. I trust you. I will lay mine down and I will pick up what yours are. 
And then what's going to happen is because now the kingdom's going to come. Do you know that the kingdom cannot come in your life if he's not king of your life? If he's not the king, you will make you are king or your wife. <laughs> or your mother-in-law I can say it she's not here this week <laughs> right somebody's king in your life you have to decide who it is so we need to pray your kingdom come and that word come there is, is in the, the Greek language is very interesting um, it's got many tenses in one word in English we don't we, we've got a tense in a word it's one tense but in the Greek when it writes in one word there can be up to five tenses meant for the one word so this word come here in the Greek is actually the imperfect tense but it's all and past it's past tense but it's also the present future tense so your kingdom come what he is saying to us is in the past when you accept God what are you saying Jesus Christ your kingdom come Jesus, I accept you as the king of my life. I accept you as the king of my life. Now, the progression starts for us in our lives every single day, and it never stops. Your kingdom come isn't a once-off thing that's supposed to happen. It is a continuous daily activity in every area of your life. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom. The progression. When Jesus speaks about the, the progression, and he shows us many different scriptures, he speaks of Matthew 13, a great, great um, chapter where he speaks about the kingdom. He says, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in the field. Number one, mustard seed. Keep that in your head. Number two, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. Number three, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed seed. What do these three things have in common? Growing. So when he speaks of the kingdom of God in your life, it's not kingdom of God complete, full, all of it's there. No, the kingdom of God in your life is a progression that takes hold of your life. The more you give over to God, the more the kingdom has opportunity to grow in your life and it will never stop growing. It can't ever stop growing. So the kingdom of God is continually growing in your life. Um, so the kingdom's dominion should be growing your life. So we have to make choices daily. And you, you have to say every single day, Lord, your kingdom come. I said I was going to be done by 11.30, and I will be done. Uh, your will be done uh, by 11.30. Um, your kingdom come. So every single day, I have to say that in, when I get up. When, when it's a bad day, I have to say, your kingdom come. When I get a bad result, I proclaim your kingdom come. And how can I proclaim these things and say these things? Because I trust my dad's will. I trust his will. I trust his, his will for my life. Whatever comes across my path, that's how we remove anxiety and fear and stress from our lives. Because now something comes across my path and I go, thank you that you are a good father who are set apart from evil. So whatever your plans are for me, your son, I proclaim your kingdom come because I know evil cannot be close to you. So in that way, I remove evil from my life. I allow His will to become my desires and to infiltrate and change my way of walking every single day. So your walk changes. I'll finish. I'm not getting to, to um, on earth as it is in heaven today. I'll finish. Uh, that, the, the challenge for us is this. God, I want your desires. God, I want your desires. I want your desires in everything, which means I have to reevaluate every area. I, I want your desires. There might be good things, might be, um, and also not just your desires for me. I want your desires in other people's lives. I, I want to be a steward of my life to have fruit that infiltrates and influences other people. I, wanna, I want that in my life. Let's pray. Let's all stand up. Can we all stand up?
I, I think the first thing which we have to establish ourselves is to say, God, I want your desires. I want, you, I, well, let me ask, start with this question. How many of you want all your petitions to be answered, to be fulfilled? Because that's the starting point right there. I want all my petitions to be fulfilled, right? I want that. Okay. Step one. Step two, then, is the following. is to say, God, I want your desires to become my desires. That's what you say. God, I want your desires to become my desires. So in order for my petitions to be fulfilled, I must have your desires. Right? So that means that God needs to show us some things. He has to reveal to us which things are just us and not Him. He has to show us what those things are. So let's pray. Let's close our eyes. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that your Spirit moves in our hearts to reveal the things that you choose to reveal, to bring forth, to show us the things which is just us, where, where you are not part of it. We want your desires to become our desires. Speak to your children now, Lord. I want to say to you, with God, nothing is impossible. All things are possible. You have a Father that is good, that loves you unconditionally, and that has the ability, when you agree with Him on earth regarding His desires for your life, power is released to bring forth the things that He has set in place. But you have to agree with Him regarding His desires. You have to come into agreement. We have to say, yes, Lord, I want this. Now, there might be things which you have to lay aside. Now, if there's something that God has revealed to you, all I want you to do is you're just going to say, Father, I place this in your hands. Show me the steps that I need to take to get out of me and into you with the plans I have. I want to ask our prayer team to come to the front, please. Now, because God is busy speaking to, to I believe he's speaking to all of us, because I don't think there's a person in this place who is saying, yeah, well, I'm good with all those things. No, God is speaking to all of us. Now, I want to encourage you. I want you to, to come to the people that's here at the front. They would love to pray with you to agree with you regarding God's desires and plans. But also, I know that God has blessed them with prophetic words of wisdom and knowledge. I know that God has given them insight. And I want us to start reflecting heaven on earth. And God says he uses his body. He said he's given us many gifts, many abilities within this body to infiltrate earth from heaven. So if you are somebody saying, you know, God, I, I just love a word of wisdom um, from you. Um, I, I love an encouraging word from you. Um, I would love some direction for you. Come and pray with them. Give heaven access to your life. Amen.